Hey guys, I'm Zoltan from Felons Miniatures. Welcome back to the channel. Today I will be painting World Eater's red armor on Karn the Betrayer, one of my favorite characters in Warhammer. This will be a step-by-step -step guide that you can also follow if you want to paint corn red armor when the new range comes out. So let's jump into it. As you can see, I primed the model black. You can use a spray on primer, an airbrush or paint it on by brush. It doesn't really matter as long as you cover the whole model thinly and evenly. I start by painting all the panels, I want to be red, blue, dark Prussian blue to be exact. I know it sounds a bit crazy, but bear with me, I'll explain later. I simply painted everything blue. No need to keep the black in the crevices since most of the surface will be covered by reds anyway, and I might just end up with mostly black shadows in the end, which defeats the purpose. With the blue done, now it's time to finally paint some red. The first color I chose was burnt red. This is a darker bluish red which transitions nicely from the dark Russian blue and can serve as most of our mid-tone. If you use citadel paints, you can substitute this with corn red I suppose. Painting red is quite tricky in my experience and this is where the blue shadow color comes in. To achieve the traditional Games Workshop painting style you can simply paint everything the same red and then do some edge highlights with lighter colors but it will never look as good as a properly highlighted model or the box art that pretends to be painted like that. If you want to actually highlight red armor that looks way more realistic than the traditional Games Workshop style, then you are faced with a problem. If you highlight it with colors that have white in them, the armor will turn pink. If you highlight with colors that contain yellow, the armor will turn orange. It is simply how red as a color works. With this model, I made the decision to go with adding white, since I want the model to have a saturated and orangish trim, so having an orange toned red would result in less contrast between the two, and way too much orange on the model in general. To avoid turning the armor pink, I had to keep the highlights small and tight, which means that the shadows and the mid-tone, the actual red parts of the model, had to be big. In order to still keep those big shadows interesting, I used the blue for my shadow color instead of the basic black. Blue or purple are great shadow colors for red, or almost anything for that matter, so it was an obvious choice. As you can see, I was covering most of the surface with this one. The most important thing here is to not cover the blue fully, especially close to the trim, so you can keep a nice separation between the elements. It is also important to leave more of the blue surface in the areas that are in shadow, like the bottom part of the leg for example, but cover more on the surfaces facing the light. This is how it looks after the burnt red is applied. The next color is half midtone and half highlights, and I used blood red for it, but you can also use Mephiston red from Citadel and I think you would end up with a similar end result. This color is nice and saturated which will help contract the whiter pinkish tones I'll use for the highlights. I covered the smaller surface area with this one, only using it inside the burnt red I painted in the previous step. Once again the guiding principle is to cover more surface on the areas facing up or towards the light and less in the shadows. For some of the darker areas facing away from the light this will actually be our final highlight.
Before I start to desaturate the red with adding a white, we can sneak in a nice saturated highlight by adding some light orange to the blood red. No need to stress too much about where the highlights should go. I already scratched the main highlights with the blood red, so I'll mostly operate within the bounds of those areas. Before you start painting, you can take a picture of the model under a strong light, and wherever you see the reflected light, that is a good place to put your highlights. However, that is perfectly fine to put the main highlight wherever you want, as long as they are on an upward facing surface, you can make it look good in my experience. The rule of cool is more important than realism here. With this color, I also started to apply some small scratches and dots on the previous step to simulate wear and tear and to make the shadows a bit more interesting. Just make sure that these are thin, otherwise they won't look like scratches but more like unintentional mistakes and smudges. The armor is getting brighter, but now the real highlighting is about to begin. It is time to start adding ivory into the blood red, which is mostly a white color. As I said before, this will make it desaturated and more and more pink as we go lighter, but that is okay since we will keep this to a small surface and to the edge highlights. Just like with the previous color, I also create scratches and little marks and dots on the previous colors as well to create a worn and realistic effect on the armor plus to create more visual interest around the model. These will also help blend the colors together. At this point it is also time to add edge highlights everywhere where there is an exposed edge. No need to do edge highlights inside the armor panels though, like you see on some of the Games Workshop box art. That looks artificial and is not needed when we already create volumetric highlights. From this point on I just kept repeating the same process with more and more ivory added into the reds until I ended up with only ivory and applying it to an increasingly smaller surface inside the already established brighter areas. The final highlight should only be added on parts of the surfaces and the edges that are the most exposed to the light. Don't cover every edge since that will ruin the contrast we established up until this point. And with that, the red armor is done, now it needs some framing by the trim so we can better see how it looks, but we will do that in the next video. I hope you guys found some inspiration for painting your own corn dudes, and if you liked the video, please consider giving it a like and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one.